for joining me for this Monday Guitar Motivation. I'm actually not in the studio today. I've got some other projects that I'm working on. But I wanted to make sure and give you something to work on this week. So remember, this is pre-recorded. Please say hello, and when I get a chance, I will certainly look back and uh, say hi to everybody as best I can. So today what we're going to be doing is looking at trying to get creative with chord movements and um, movable chords. And there's two different ways that we can do this. Now, both ways you usually utilize open strings. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I was to take a D chord, for instance, okay? And when I first started learning how to play, you know, you play G and D and A and all these sorts of things. But I remember learning a couple songs early on where the chords would move across the guitar this way. Now, obviously, that's the premise of a bar chord, if you know what your bar chords are. But I always thought it was really cool that you could take like the D chord, for instance, and move it up and different, get different kinds of sounds like that. Now, when you're moving it up, obviously every time you move it up, it's becoming some other theoretical name, right? There, there's gonna become a chordal name for it. But for right now, I don't want you to think about that. What I want you to focus on is just the, the sound and the different things that you could do with this. So you might recognize some of these songs that we're gonna be looking at today, but Let's say I took this D chord and I went like this. Right? You might recognize that song. Uh, and if, as it keeps going, there's another part in there where they go up. You see? So it's moving that D chord around the fretboard and it sounds kind of interesting. So what you need to do, if you're trying to do this for your own songwriting or whatever it might be, you just have to move it around and see how it sounds in various different spots. You'll notice if I go from here to here, it's gonna have a very different kind of sound. Now that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it sounds, sounds different, sounds a little bit spookier maybe, right? So, one, that's the one way. Number one is, is moving chords around, various chord shapes around the fretboard. Um, the first time I kind of came across this was in a song by Rush that did this. Now that one is a little bit different, right? So now I'm not keeping the same shape the entire time, but what I'm utilizing are these shapes that are moving around and utilizing open strings. You see that? So I'm playing this E power chord up here and leaving these open, and then I'm going to the B bar chord essentially, but I'm leaving these two open again. And then I'm moving down here. Now on that one, I just have to make sure I really have to watch out that I don't hit the G string because it sounds terrible. So, and then, okay. So that's the second kind is not that you're moving the shape around completely. You're utilizing what we'll call chord fragments, parts of a chord, and then utilizing open strings around that. Okay. So the first idea is taking a chord and actually physically moving it around the guitar. I could take the E chord, here's another example. I could take the E chord and move it up here to the fifth fret and the seventh fret, or seventh and ninth fret, excuse me. Up to seven, up to nine, and get a different kind of sound. Now what I'm essentially playing there is an E, A, and B, but instead of it sounding like E and then this blocked kind of sound to get A and B, or here, here, and here. Instead of getting that, it keeps sort of this, this ethereal sound by utilizing those open strings around it. You see? Another one that I've always enjoyed is uh, an Alice in Chains song that sounds like this. It's using an A7. and I'm just moving that A7 around. Another Alice in Chains song, this one right here. Okay. 
And again, you can see I'm making a bar chord, then I'm taking the bar part off, utilizing those open strings, and then moving up, and then doing the same thing. So sometimes you're using a movable shape, sometimes you're simply playing a fragment of something. Like this for me would be, in my mind, a movable shape, right? But let's say uh, there's a Dream Theater song called The Silent Man. So it uses a couple of different things. So it starts off with that E, and it is gonna use this A and this B, but it also uses an F sharp minor by doing this. So it leaves this open, leaves these first two open, and plays the F sharp in the middle there. F sharp minor. You see? So there's lots of different ways that you can explore this. One thing you can do is just simply take a chord that you like, an open chord, whatever it is, and start moving it around the guitar and see what kind of sounds you get and um, see if you can get creative with that. Sometimes what works really well is if you take that chord and just look around and see if you can find maybe a, a picking pattern that you like. And you might even, for instance, take a finger off the guitar. Like I might take this third finger off and get an even more interesting sound. So maybe I'm playing A minor seven. Or I'm starting off with A minor. And when I move up, I switch to that by taking that finger off. So there's lots of different things that you can do to try and make this a little more creative in your own writing. But it's just a lot of fun. That way, what, what I always found was interesting when I would teach these things to students is that you, sometimes you need to break that, that normal way of thinking about G and C and D and that sort of thing. And again, as much as I love bar chords and stuff like that, they do have kind of a blocky sound to them. Sometimes oh, it works perfectly, sometimes it doesn't work as well as you wish it would. It depends on the circumstance, it depends on the song, style, all that sort of thing. But these are really meant to have that kind of flowing sound. I mean, listen to that one. You just have to explore things, and you might like that and go, okay, but there's one note in there I don't really like. Well, okay, well then you shift that note up or down, and you keep adjusting it until it sounds the way that you want it to sound. That's the fun of this stuff, is it's not just thinking key and, you know, logical chord and that sort of thing. It's just using your ear and thinking about how you could make something that sounds interesting to you. Okay? So, take care. Thank you so much for joining me. Please share the video if uh, you are so inclined. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and certainly check out GuitarZoom.com. Check out my guitar courses and the membership that we offer and things like that. So take care, stay positive, have a wonderful week, and I'll talk